Ladies and gentlemen, I had a dream. And in that dream, one of the most glamorous sports women of all time invited me to her home city. And this shy and reserved and somewhat reclusive type character welcomed me and a camera crew with open arms. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, dreams can come true. All you've got to do is hold on and believe. Hey, this is Gabrielle Sabatini. How are you? <laughs> Thanks. She's one of the most iconic sports stars of all time. Hi, I'm Gabriela Sabatini. In 1985, she became the youngest Grand Slam semi-finalist. I was only 15. Five years later, Argentina's first Grand Slam winner. The 1990 US Open Women's Champion, Gabriela Sabatini. There were dolls in a successful perfume range created in her honor. She seemed to have it all. But at just 26 years of age, Gabriella Sabatini retired, citing burnout and chose life away from the spotlight. Today, for the first time in 10 years, we bring you Miss Gabriella Sabatini. So it's been 10 years now since you've retired. Yes. So what happened to Gabriella Sabatini after tennis? Well, uh, it's amazing. I, I, I don't feel that it, that it has been 10 years. Um, it's, um, I've, I've been doing a lot of, lot of different things. I've been enjoying myself very much. I've been traveling, getting to know places. Um, I've been trying different things. Um, uh, obviously, I keep working with my perfumes. So I keep doing things with the perfume and, and I travel to promote that. And then um, I invest in different things. I love real estate and I'm doing some things with that too. So just give us an idea of what an average week in the life of Gabriella Sabatini would be right now. Well, I, it will be, I, I like to exercise three, four times a week. So I do that in the morning. And then I go to the office. I have an office and there's always things to do and things to decide. and. Um, I, I have two or three more friends that are working with me in the office and so yeah I mean we, we discuss the different things and what we're going to do and, and that's, that's about it and then in the evening maybe I go out with friends or go to the movies sometimes, that's what I do. Can you tell us what difference tennis made to your life? I was very shy and it was very hard for me to, you know, to talk. To, to make relationships and, and tennis in a way helped me to become a little more outgoing, um, to talk more, to relate to people. Um, so in that way it helped me very much. And then the things that you need to confront every time there is something new that um, you always have to overcome um, is either the media, is either the, the matches itself. Uh, the pressure, uh, being alone, those are all things that also you need to deal with. Gabriella won her first tournament aged eight. She was the world number one junior in 1984 and turned professional a year later. 27 career titles, an Olympic silver medalist who at Grand Slam level reached at least one semi-final from 1985 to 1995. She was a Wimbledon finalist in 1991 but most significantly, the US Open champion in 1990. That was definitely my best moment in my career. And um, uh, when I started to play the tournament, I remember before that I, I was, um, I wasn't playing bad tennis, but I, was, I wasn't having good results. So I was a little frustrated. And when the US Open started, the, the amazing thing that happened was that every night, when I had to go to bed, I couldn't fall asleep thinking when I went, that I was holding the trophy. And uh, that was every night, every single day, I will think about the same thing. And that never happened to me before. And, and then I had to play the semifinals against Mary Jo Fernandez. And I lost the first set. I was losing the second set. And all of a sudden, I started to come to the net. You know, just to start being very aggressive. I think Mary Jo was, was very surprised <laughs> because she didn't expect this. So I started to do that and, and I, I started to turn the, the match around and I won the second set. And then the third set, the same thing. I kept doing the same thing. 
and it worked and I won the, the, ga the game, the match. Um, the next day I had to play against Steffi, the final, and I was a little bit tired physically. Um, so I knew that I needed to be sharp um, every single game, every single point, and if I could finish the match, you know, early, the better. So I remember I won the, the, the first set 6-2, doing the same game, just coming into the net, and, and again, I think I surprised her also. And, and the second set was uh, very tight. Um, you know, we were five all and then six all. We went to a tie break, and, and I knew I had to, to give my best and, and try to win it there. A point away is Sabatini. Perfect. It was like you know the best the best moment. I mean, the, the last point was just um, you know, touching the sky. You know, it was, it was you know, perfect. It's a moment when I when I won, I jumped, and uh, it was nice that I had my brother, another friend, uh, my coach, and I went right up to them and. Uh, give him a hug, and uh, it was it was nice that I could share that with him. And then it comes the the moment after, you know, when you're in your room, thinking about it, and you say, "Wow, uh, it paid off." You know, um, all this time that I was feeling frustrated, uh, you know, the the moment came. A year later, and you're again in a Grand Slam final, and against Steffi Graf this time at Wimbledon. Well, that, that Wimbledon was also very special because um, when I, I started to play the tournament, um, I, I was very tense, very nervous. I wasn't doing my game, and I almost lost the first game. And I sat down with my coach, and we said, "Okay, I, I need to do something because I can't continue playing like this." So he said, okay, you need to start doing your game, start hitting the ball, coming into the net, and just do your game. Don't worry about anything else. You know, don't, don't worry about your feelings, just, just play. And I, I changed my, my mind completely. Um, I mean, the next day I went out to play and, and my game was, was different. I was like, like cold on the court. That's what I needed, to be cold. And, and not to put my feelings into it. And, and that's how I played every match, and I played great tennis. And, and so I, 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 I felt proud that I was able to change that, you know, that, that, that tension that I was feeling, that pressure. Um, so I had, I had a different feeling that, that, than what people saw, you know, people saw that I was just two points away from winning the tournament. Of course, I, I know that, and, and I mean, it would have been great you know, if I could have won the, the tournament, we will. Um, but, I mean, I, I felt that I did a, a very good tournament, and I had Steffi in front of me, and until the last point, <laughs> the match is not over. Two years later, at Roland Garros, it's quite a <laughs> horror story for you, up against Mary Jo Fernandez in the quarterfinals. Everything is going so well, and then all of a sudden, so bad. Yeah, that Roland Garros, I, I was playing great. Um, everything was just uh, great. My my level of tennis was at the top. Playing against Mary Jo, I was winning 6-1, 5-1. I had uh, much points. And it's, it was interesting, the, the feeling I had. I, I felt like I couldn't win the match. I couldn't finish it. And it was it was very frustrating <laughs> feeling. Um, I tried different things uh, because I had I had different match points, um, but I, I I couldn't finish the the match. Uh, and then she, you know, she started to turn around the match, and I lost the second. The third was very close, um, so she ended up winning. That match was was it didn't leave a good feeling. Um, it lasted for I would say a few weeks until um, I got it over. I was just, um, yeah, like, 
sad and frustrated and um, how come you know I, I was so so close and why I had those feelings you know um, it, it was hard for me to to s step away and, s and understand you know what what happened try to think about other things try to again think about the practice and, and to work and practice and, and um, you know, work on the things that I needed to, to work uh, play on grass uh, but uh, it was hard to get that off my mind you know, uh, because it was just very much inside and, and it was hard to focus on something else there a few years later you hired a psychologist mm -hmm. um, was that a symptom of how tough things were on the court or was that just something to revive your career? I didn't know what was happening with me. I didn't know what was going through my mind. I mean, I, 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 I felt like it was very hard for me to go out and practice, um, to enjoy tennis, and, but I didn't know the reason why. Um, so I started to work with him to discover, to find out what was really happening and, and he pushed me. Um, very hard, and, and that's when when we realized that you know I, I don't want to be here. Game set match, Cordell Whitmire, six four, six four. So we worked together with with my coach at that moment was Juan Nunes, and you know he understood very well, and, and so I think right after that I played a few more tournaments and. That's when I decided to retire. Because it's a young age to retire at 26. Ask Wanda Agassi, I guess. Um, yeah. So, so what, how tough is it to make that final decision? In my case, it wasn't, it wasn't hard. Once I, I knew that this is the decision I, I have made. And from that moment on, it wasn't difficult at all. Um, the difficult part was to, to tell the world <laughs> that I was finishing uh, because I felt like no one would understand, understand what was going, going on through my mind. Um, but I tried to explain that this is now what, this is the, the decision that makes me happy. I felt a relief. I was um, you know, already thinking about my new life and, and just having a normal life. I, I guess that's the need I had, you know, that to live a normal life. Um, you know, that I could go to bed uh, you know, anytime I want. I can eat whatever I want. Um, you know, I don't have to wake up in the morning and, and say I have to go and practice. I was reading this interview with Marit Safin, who's quite a funny guy by mm -hmm. nature, and he was saying that if the normal person understood how much advice a tennis player gets in life, they would go crazy. <laughs> how many people gave you advice on how to serve and how to play tennis? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people that want to help <laughs> um, or see something that is not working. And, you know, I don't know, there are people that know about tennis and some people don't know about tennis and they, they even want to help, um, which is funny I and mean, you, you laugh at that um, because yeah it will be very confusing to have so many people <laughs> giving you advices. <laughs>